behind the scenes footage in not another adventure. We're gonna go down and we're gonna have a fight. It's like a cool angle, it's like fun recording then, it was embarrassing. Carrie's making friends with a horse. Tunnel house? I Red did. The, the eaters want seats. No one saw it coming. <laughs> And that's Kat. And that's Hannah. And this is Tom. And we, we are Team, team Valhalla. And this is not another adventure. Yeah. Hello. And we're here today in glorious Gloucestershire. Siren Sester. Siren Sester. And we're going to do a bit of exploring together today. Going around the amphitheatre here, which we'll show you in a minute. Yeah. And then we're going to hopefully take you on to find the source of the River Thames. Like, how come all these mound things are here? Hannah makes a good point. What are all these mounds? So this is where all the seating would have been inside this beautiful, big, and the largest surviving amphitheatre in Britain would have been all the way around these little mounds here. This was an oval amphitheatre, which is really unusual because they're normally always circular. So, um, but Siren Sester was a really important town for the Romans. In fact, it was only second in population and wealth to Londinium, good old London. And that's because the Thames, the head of the Thames, is just down the road. And in fact, we're going to go see the head of the Thames, aren't we? Yep. Where the Thames begin. The source <laughs> of the great stinking river Thames. <laughs> oh, look at this. Isn't it massive? It is. <laughs> Hello. Shows how massive it is. Yeah. So this would have seated and stood around 8,000 people. So many people. I know. I can't even imagine that many people being. No, around. not even now, is it? No. And obviously the population was much, much lower back then. So it's about 2 AD I'm talking about here. And Abbey there, for people who are not too sure what that is, is where you would be a spectator in things like uh, bull baiting, gladiatorial fighting, and sometimes later on cultural stuff like plays and productions that the local people would love to put on. In a minute we're going to go down and we're going to have a fight. Yep. I'll, put, I'll put a sandwich in the middle of the amphitheatre down there and it would be me and Tom versus... What's oh. the sandwich? What's the question? Cheese yeah. and a spiced apple chutney Ooh. and mixed pickles. I'm going to win. Yeah. I'm winning that cheese sandwich. The Gauls versus the Marshmen of Wales. <laughs> 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 Is that you can always win by talking. Yeah. <laughs> After that epic fight in the arena, in the amphitheatre of life, that's what we're calling it here. The gods themselves were watching. <laughs> they were. Judge, can you just please, can you judge the fight? Good. Should they live or should they die? I decided I'm really on the cheese sandwich. So. <laughs> oh my god! Ultimate betrayal. No one saw it coming. No <laughs> one saw it coming. <laughs> So now we're heading off to find the source of the River Thames. There's a little bit of a debate about where the actual beginning of the River Thames is, simply because there's an aquifer all under that area where they believe the Thames springs from. And there's also a few little places where water feeds in. There's a bit of a dispute, but we're going to go to the point where most people have agreed upon it being the start of the River Thames. That's the state of politics though, that, isn't it? <laughs> hey guys, did you know that you're entering into the Tunnel of Truth?
So we're just coming through Siren Sister Park. We come off that busy road that um, I'll be able to show you now. What's around us? We're coming through this park, this wonderful backdrop, and there's a little race going on behind us as well. Lots of little runners out this morning, which is really cute, really nice to see. Um, but we're still in search. What's that? Sorry, this is where she went. That is cute. <laughs> 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 um, but we're still in search of the head of the River Thames, aren't we? Yes, a little bit of a walk yet. Now we're going to head off along the Monarchs Way. We've been following the Monarchs Way since we got off the um, A Road. And this is the path that King Charles II forced to take when he was escaping Oliver Cromwell's army. So yes, this is just part of it. It's actually massive. It's 115 miles long. It's one of our longest continuous stretches of trail. So yay, let's get going then. We got away from that road, Hannah. It's been nicer, isn't it? <laughs> it's so much nicer. Bit of peace and quiet here. Got this nice sort of pathway cutting through. If you haven't already, please do check out Not Another Adventure. <laughs> um, Tom and Hannah have a brilliant channel. They put a lot of effort and energy into their videos. Uh, they're one of our favourites, so go and give them a look. We've put all the details down in the description, um, along with a link to their channel. On there. Right, I'm almost over, mate. No one panic. Don't panic, Chapter. <sighs> nobody, nobody panic. I'm alright. You're cheating, though. I mean, you're six foot, Kerry. Oh my god. Oh my god. Get down. Double up on recording then, it was embarrassing. Wait, there was no etiquette for that, was there, Hannah? <laughs> so I didn't realise that you were recording, it's like, what if you were oh. I know, I bet you thought, why, why is she standing still? She's ruining my edit. <laughs> we're closing in now on the River Thames, not too far to go. Are you excited? Yeah. I don't know what we're going to find. The I River Thames, no Kerry, the head of the River Thames. <laughs> But are we though? <laughs> Tom real. still doesn't believe it's real. Still, look, it's the river wind rush. What did you say was fake earlier as well? Gravity. <laughs> I mean, it's great. Gravity is not real. <laughs> I would just like to clarify that gravity is very much real. River Thames, jury's out. <laughs> <laughs> Secretly, the river wind rush all along. That is a tributary to it the is, Thames. Yeah. See, I oh, but you don't believe in the terms. Oh, I'm cracking his shell. Oh, no. Cracking his shell. <laughs> I've been, I've been uh, mm -hmm. caught out. Mm. I'll make a good copper, wouldn't I? Tunnel house? <laughs> uh, don't pull me up. Did you see that? This got very awkward very quick. <laughs> what happened here? Why, why have we made everything so complicated? We've come through these beautiful fields in lovely Gloucester today. And I think this is the source of the River Thames. Or one of. That's lovely. The conservators of the River Thames, 1857-18. 1974. This stone was placed here to mark the source of the River Thames. I suppose you may have, you may have been able to see it, but it's a, there's an aquifer under us, and it just comes up from different spots. Behind the scenes footage, not another adventure. Aww. Mm -hmm. So to help us recover from the excitement of finding the source of the River Thames, general underwhelming uh, vibes are running through the group at the moment. And we asked uh, a local who's having a nice sandwich over there and they said actually the river is not visible, although it does run under here, it's not actually visible for quite some distance. So in a minute when we've had a nice sandwich and a cup of tea, yep. we'll head back um, the way we came. We may see a couple of um, other things on the way back, so stick with it. Absolutely. And you may see something so exciting you can't believe it. Prize from the gladiatorial bout this morning. My sandwich. <laughs> back off Hannah, back off Tom. So this is also where the stone marks the source of the River Thames is also the start of the Thames footpath. 
which finishes in the our capital city centre near the floodgates. Cheers, Information Tom. provided <laughs> by Tom, yeah. Just finishing off our tea break. So we're just gonna have a quick skull and then we're gonna head off um, for the rest of the afternoon. Skull! skull! So just a few meters away from the actual marker of the source is this little sort of almost like a well. And I presume occasionally if there's particularly wet weather, you'll probably be able to see um, the start of the Thames here. Somebody's put quite a rather sweet little pentagram in here made of ivy and holly. So it obviously means quite a lot to somebody, but then obviously it was quite traditional for pagans to mark the starts of rivers because they often believed that gods looked over river sources. and we're off in pursuit of new things. Tunnel house, potentially. Tom and Hannah back there behind us with fully charged tea, sandwiches, and all the good stuff. So we're making our way down to the tunnel house now, running alongside this old railway track that's down in the ditch here. Obviously nothing left of it now, just its old footing. It'll be interesting to see what this tunnel house is. Our presumption, and we've made a good prediction, haven't we, Tom? We have. Um, that it will be something to do with a railway tunnel. Maybe it's a house that was underneath like a railway tunnel. <gasps> and I don't know, maybe like the foreman lived there near a station or something. I love it. That could be extremely true. But we don't know yet. It's about a mile away. So we'll soon find out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Hannah's just saying about the angle of the bricks and stuff. I don't know, you can quite pick it up on the GoPro, but the, the craftsmanship and the ingenuity that's gone into building this is absolutely amazing. Matt did this. It is Matt. It looks like a Pink Floyd album cover. Pink Floyd album cover, <laughs> yeah. He's such a little explorer. See you, Dora. Can you say explore? <laughs> So this is Coates Roundhouse. Interesting little building. Five of these roundhouses were once along the Thames and Severn Canal, built in the late 1700s for lengthsmen who looked after the canal. I'm stealing that shot. What shot? He did a shot where he went in. Phantom train! Oh, Tom was worried that was a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. I have a special it's come down the like Yeah, it's down, down the normal <laughs> down the abandoned. Yeah, me too. I didn't think I didn't I didn't think it was gonna be like a, a real, real building, thing. no. Because you get all those rich people that like yeah. in the 1700s they build they like it. fake buildings. Or dovecots and things yeah. because obviously they used to eat the doves, but You take the low road and, and you take, take the, the high road and I'll be in where was it called Stapperton <laughs> before ye. So just speaking to a lovely family that was walking alongside here and uh, we were mistaken this was never part of the railway the railway is further down this was actually always a canal it's more obvious here that's why i was asking them it's a lot more obvious the banks are a lot more shored up and it's in a lot better condition it, it looks more obvious but back where we were it was almost just a footprint obviously with the bridges over them while your mind would go straight towards the train but yes this was actually part of the cotswolds canal so that's fantastic. And obviously canals were an amazing way of opening up trade routes. And we used for thousands of years for that reason. 
So this is the magnificent Sapperton Tunnel. Absolutely beautiful. It is the fanciest tunnel I think I've ever seen. And just up there, there is a building built for the men, the young men, who used to have to haul the canal boats through the tunnel itself. This was called legging. It was a service provided for all the uh, users of the canal. The tunnel itself was actually created in 1784. So it is actually the right sort of time for this sort of Grecian sort of classical building. This was very normal. And if you go to a lot of the estates in uh, England that were built around the same time, you'll see this kind of architecture everywhere. It became very popular. People like Alexander Pope was very much into this sort of faux Georgian architecture. So this canal was extremely important, especially to the Cotswolds, because it linked the Thames with the River Severn, which meant that you had a huge amount of trade route. So it opened up lots of money via the textile industry, coal, all the things that really made a lot of money in Britain just before the Industrial Revolution really kicked in. <laughs> Stop, look, and listen. So the sun's just come out for us now as we've come across the fields. Very rural area, lots of farmland. Beautiful. I think we just walked out into the village of Coates. This lovely church. Oh, it's beautiful Cotswold stone. It's all drywall as well. It's not like. um, it's not limed in, it's just drywall. A cemetery. No, a graveyard. Actually the yard's are next to a church. The cemeteries don't have a church next to it. This is where folks oh. get burnt. Yeah. Carrie's making friends with a horse. Beautiful little village of coats. Quite a typical Cotswold village. All the walls and the houses mostly built of the Cotswold stone. The old forge. So we're just starting to walk through Sirencester Park where the polo club is and we're going to go and have a little walk around the park itself and go up to Queen Anne's monument. Apparently it's a beautiful monument. It's beautiful here. Look at this. Where in the name Odin's Beard are these seats? I Where did. The, seats? the eaters want seats. Oh, I promise. <laughs> I promise seats. <laughs> but Tom's fine, so there is seats coming up. I swear, it's all seats. Just like sit down. So we're just looking for a little building to have a sit down. Beautiful. Look at that. Another sort of Roman Grecian style building, all very popular in the 18th century. Oh, it's gorgeous. Seating thing. I think they thought I was lying. So Sirencester Park is absolutely gorgeous. It's massive. I wouldn't even call it park, it's park land. Beautiful little refuge to sit in, drink a tea. Oh, they've called it Pope's Seat. I presume after Alexander Pope. That goes way into the woodland. And this side, it's the Parkland. And that's Kerry fetching the camera for the thousandth time today. So we're just leaving our uh, second pit stop of the day. Everyone's re-energised and just taking in the last few stops of the day now. Walking along a beautiful broad ride here um, and eventually we'll get to Queen Anne's monument. Queen Anne herself stood at the top of the plinth. It's actually 50 feet high, created in 1741 and pretty magnificent wouldn't you say guys? Magnificent! <laughs> so Queen Anne up there. A very short-reigned queen, unfortunately for her. 
from 1702 to 1707 looking out over some of her kingdom and there she is we've had a brilliant day here in gloucestershire we've explored all sorts of different things the tunnel house was yeah that old canal weird. was a real yeah and it was a real surprise as well yeah. 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 Was in, yeah. don't forget if you haven't already check out tom and hannah's channel Please do. brilliant channel lots of energy Amazing lots of effort people. goes into their videos the link on all the details will be down in the description thank you for sticking with us this long into the video if you have enjoyed the video hit the thumbs up Maybe. Drop us a little comment down below. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Boom. Hitting that bell notification. <laughs> Until next time, stay safe and well. And keep enjoying those green spaces. <laughs> Bye. Bye. It's goodbye from us. And it's goodbye from another, another adventure. adventure. <laughs>